Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk to you guys about the two most popular Office suites out there on the market. So I'm talking about LibreOffice, which is the free one, and Microsoft Word 2016, which is the paid version. Um, well, different pieces of software entirely, but the paid Office suite that uh, many businesses use. So you can see that they're quite similar, especially if I go ahead and open up a blank document. You can see in Microsoft Word that you have templates there, but that kind of thing also exists in LibreOffice. Uh, I can't say with 100% certainty, but my guess is that many of the things in LibreOffice have been stylized over um, Microsoft Word in the past, and maybe they had some interchange between there. Uh, but ultimately, the interface that they've developed for these two suites has been pretty streamlined. You can see things like the zoom in option being down there in the bottom right hand corner. Of course, if I if I took these apps and opened them up to their full size rather than have them side by side, you can see uh, it becomes a little bit clearer there, but we're doing side by side for right now just uh, so that we can compare them. Um, yeah, and then you have like the toolbars up there on the top. The style of the toolbar in Microsoft Word has changed quite a bit um, since around the 2007. I think what we're looking at right here over in the LibreOffice is more like 2007 Microsoft Word. So with these tabs, you can switch between them. And rather than having one static toolbar in Microsoft Word 2016, we have these different tabs that contain pretty much all the functionality you'd ever need. Though. There are extra features that you can customize just like in LibreOffice. So for instance, if I wanted to uh, do some customization in LibreOffice, I'd right click, go to customize toolbar and add extra options there to these different segments. And I believe you can do something similar by uh, clicking on say a section like paragraph here in the layout tab. And you can do similar things by right clicking on these different sections in Microsoft Word. They're actually called uh, the ribbon. That's what we're looking at, not a toolbar, my bad on that. Uh, but customize the ribbon. It will allow you to basically put new segments into there. And man, there are so many bloody options that you can actually add onto your Microsoft Word ribbons. Pretty much everything you can imagine from opening a document to creating macros or basically uh, preset commands that will do cer uh, a certain thing for you when you execute them. You could kind of think of them as like custom buttons in a sense. And uh, th other things like bulleting, very standard off office stuff, but both programs are customizable in that sense, which is good for the advanced users. For the average user though, uh, pretty much what you see is what you're going to need to work with. And because both apps kind of have the same thing going on here like you have the insert tab or the insert ribbon over here in Microsoft Word and the insert uh, menu drop down menu down here in LibreOffice it kind of equates to the same thing pretty much anything you can type out in LibreOffice or Microsoft Word you can do in the other so for instance let's say I wanted to go ahead and pull these title styles from LibreOffice over into Microsoft Word kind of to do the same thing. So I'll, I'll just copy this text or you know what? I won't copy it because that might actually actually no you know what that is a good test. What happens if you copy it? Does the formatting go cross platform? It does. Yeah, that's interesting. But instead of doing that, let's go ahead and manually type it out because what we want to do is assign the style manually and I'll show you how this is pretty much the same process either way here. So we have our text written out. We want to apply a style to it in the home tab. So we go over here to styles and we can select the style we want. In this case, it's title correlating almost exactly with the styles in LibreOffice. Now there might be a couple extra defaults in Microsoft Word, but it's the same concept. It's, um, it's a repeatable set of rules that you can apply to different pieces of text in your document. So style two, and I'll make this a title as well. And then if I go back in and I edit it, and by that, I mean the style itself, by right clicking on the style, going to modify, it works the same way. So make that 36 size. It's the same as if we had changed a style over here by going to edit style. And then changing the font size once again, hitting apply, okay. And you can see it updates the two sections. 
For the basic text writing functionality, you do have the same features. You want bold text? Great, that's in both on the basic toolbar. So we have bold, italic, underline, strike through, superscript, and subscript. That's where the text uh, shrinks a bit and goes above the rest of the text and below the rest of the text. That exact same stuff is over here as well. So we can take this text, bold it, italicize, underline, strike through, subscript, and turn that into superscript if we want to. So hopefully you can really see that the general functionality of the two programs has been set up to be roughly the same. And you can probably attribute that just to these are the features that people want. These are the features that people need need and that there's not a huge amount of space for creativity it's just this is what is required to get the job done now um, Microsoft Office 2016 does have a couple extra features that uh, LibreOffice does not have for instance Foxit Reader PDF integration and integration into similar apps. So by having this in there, uh, basically certain apps like Foxit Reader, uh, Foxit Reader is like Adobe Reader if you haven't used Foxit, um, allow you to have extra functionality like the ability to create a PDF from your document here. And Microsoft itself has written an additional integration with its own apps. So you can log into your account in the top right of Microsoft anything, well, Microsoft Office programs like Microsoft Word. But when you do that, um, you can start doing things like saving to your Microsoft OneDrive. And uh, OneDrive, for those who don't know, is the cloud storage solution for Microsoft. Um, they do try to mention it to you when you install Windows 10 as well. So it's kind of like Microsoft wants you to use all the Microsoft products and that's fine. Um, and they also give you some extra integration there. Obviously, uh, LibreOffice does not have that same kind of thing there. That doesn't mean you can't save documents to, let's say, your OneDrive in LibreOffice. Of course you can. It's pretty much a folder on your computer. Um, but Microsoft goes the extra mile to make sure that it's right there in your face in the save as. You can just click that and save to your OneDrive immediately rather than having to search for it. So next let's go ahead and compare LibreOffice Calc to Excel. You probably can kind of get the idea that these are the same style of program. They are giant spreadsheet programs and spreadsheets are useful for certain things. Accountants use them a lot if you want to run some calculations by adding a bunch of numbers in the different cells of your table and do a total on them. That's fine. You can do exactly the same thing in both. So four, five, six, you want to add those together. Great. Let's create a function right here and we'll do a sum of those three cells. It in Excel, you can see it automatically figures out which ones I want to do, and it calculates it to 15. It does have a nice little animation on top of that where it kind of uh, slides down like a slot machine. Now let's do the same thing over in LibreOffice, and you'll imagine it's pretty similar. So we'll add 5, 5, and 5, or 5, 5, 6, and we'll do a sum function. You can see they basically know that sum function is probably the one that's most used, so they provide it for you right there instead of having to hit the function wizard. But let's do that sum. And yep, just like Excel, it recognizes, hey, probably want to work with this data right above it because I don't see anything else. So we'll go ahead, add that in, hit enter, and it calculates it for us exactly the same. Now, what about the ability to add charts and images and that kind of thing? Over on the insert tab, you can find recommended charts and a bunch of different uh, graphs histograms, pie charts, those kinds of things that you can take your data and use those to create a chart. So let's go ahead and select our data and try to create a pie chart out of this. Pretty simple. So it may not be the most informative pie chart in the world, but it takes the four, the five, and the six and compares which part of which part those numbers are of the whole. And yeah, all of the data is right there automatically. And you can do pretty much the same thing over in LibreOffice Calc. So I'm not going to go through every, um, every part of the LibreOffice suite and the Microsoft Office suite, because what I'm really trying to indicate here is that for the purposes of creating charts, documents, uh, even PowerPoint type presentations, PowerPoint being Microsoft proprietary, but a slideshow presentation rather, uh, the two are very, very, very comparable. So let's actually make a pie chart there. Or you can see the pie chart and maybe we do 
Uh, yeah, let's just go with a bar. I think that makes more sense than some of the others. Be careful with your charts. Not every piece of data makes sense on every type of graph. But you can see, effectively, it works the same. You take the data, you put it in a chart, you can add images, whatever you want to do. Now, I would say that the Microsoft 2016 interface does look a little bit slicker, maybe a little bit more professional. While LibreOffice is still a bit utilitarian, it does look kind of dated. It's definitely not bad in its physical appearance um, because it, it, it's functional and buttons rather than having way too many menu items though you still do have to play around in these drop down menus which can be a little bit cumbersome until you get used to them but overall the two apps accomplish the same thing so what is the thing that sets it apart obviously that is the cost so if you actually wanted to purchase Microsoft Office online this is what you would be looking at for the home and business pricing on Amazon so let's uh, click for the product details. You can see the retail price is $229. Okay, we'll add it to the cart because Amazon wants us to do that. And $200. Now let's check the official site for Microsoft Office 2016, the professional version, basically what you would use in the office, $400. Now for a piece of software, that's quite a chunk of money. Now. Most of your companies that you're working for or that you may work for in the future probably use Microsoft Office. It's considered the choice for professionals and corporations use that all the time because it's what they know, it's what they trust. But because you can do the same things in LibreOffice that you can do in Microsoft Office, you gotta ask yourself the question, if you're gonna be buying that for yourself and you don't have it for free because of your school, because of your workplace, is it worth two or four hundred dollars in order to get that piece of software? Keep in mind that the documents you write in LibreOffice can be imported into Microsoft Word, so that's not really too much of an issue if you need to go back and forth between your workplace and home. And there is something to be said about how Microsoft Office 2016 is a bit more modern. You can see that the chart designs are going to be sleeker. You do also have a few extra tools inside of the Microsoft Office suite, such as the ability to create a biography and have some tools here to assist you with that, whether you're doing APA style, MLA style, or any of the other common ones that college papers need to use. At the end of the day, the choice is yours. You may be able to find Microsoft Office for a lower price if that $200, $400 price point is too much for you. But in any case, I've been Chris. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my future videos.